Hey guys, thank you so much for downloading and listening to this episode of On The Beat. Have you rated or reviewed us yet? If not, why? The best way for us to grow is by sharing us with your friends and rating and reviewing us wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify has a new rating feature right on our podcast front page. It is super easy, and the more five-star ratings and reviews we get, the better it is for us to grow. If you screenshot and DM us your review, we'll share the most flattering ones on an upcoming episode. Thank you so much for listening, and your support is marvelous and appreciated. I want to do, like... And then you come in and you go... See, I can't go that high. No, then you have to do the beginning. Okay. Go. Okay. Good. That was really good. Wow, that was something, wasn't it? Well, hello there. Welcome to On the Beat, the podcast that uncovers full frontal male nudity in cinema. My name is Laura, and I am joined by my co-host, Ryan. Hello. Hey, Ryan. This is happening. This is happening. This is really happening. Are you quite excited for this one? Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so am I. The 1984 action sci-fi film, The Terminator. Yeah, The Terminator. Oh, my God. So, where do we begin? We begin... With Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's obviously the T-800, the Terminator. Your clothes given to me. Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. Iconic. Yes. And Michael Bain, Kyle Reese. Mm-hmm. There's more people in this movie, too, but those yeah, are... Yeah, there's a shit ton. Those are top three. Yeah. Well, there's a bunch of folk who end up being kind of James Cameron. I'm going to call him JC, because I feel like Ooh, we can. Sweet. Yeah. Um, not to be confused with Jesus Christ, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> interchangeable um, no i'm just james yes. cameron's not jesus Christ. no 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 don't say that <laughs> jesus oh shit i mean james <laughs> james <laughs> sorry jane um yeah well they end up being a bunch of folk who end up being uh uh staples in films that he makes after this one yeah so yeah we call we would probably say or at least he regards the terminator to be his 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 debut even though literally isn't his directorial debut right um but let's get a little bit more into james cameron i didn't think we'd ever have this day where we were able to talk about james cameron I at know. any sort of length thing is yeah it's funny because i've been you know doing this research for i don't know 15 years or something i can't remember but Fuck. since that's 2007 that's a long time yeah 14 years yeah i was still at university in 2007 yeah. yeah. No, I. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been compiling this research for so long, yeah. and bumming, like bumming about getting a fucking film degree that means nothing. <laughs> That's not true. I've made no. a lot of things. Yeah, you yeah. have. Yeah, yeah, it was worth it. Yeah, and riddle yourself with debt. You are not riddled with debt. I no. got a master's degree in archaeology, and I will never get out of that hole. But um, tish, but um, tis, but um, tosh. Because they're really big in the ground. Yeah, you need um, to figure that one out. Yeah, well, yeah, I need to figure my job out. But yeah, life. Uh, <laughs> but I've seen this movie in insurmountable amount of times. Like so many times, mm. I've seen this movie because it's fucking awesome. The and Terminate, I yeah, Terminator don't... and RoboCop were kind of like they were the sorts of films that my dad would let me see, even though I was definitely too young to see them. I was watching horror movies instead. Like I was watching Nightmare on Elm Street type of stuff. And I wasn't watching, I didn't see Robocop until I was freaking 30 years old or something. There's plenty of horror inspiration in the Terminator though. Yeah. I mean, JC said it himself that uh, after he watched Halloween, that was, that was what inspired him to make the Terminator. 
Yeah. And I think a lot of the, I, I also had read that a lot of the ideas were from like a nightmare he had while he was working on the Piranha movie. Oh. Because he hated it so much. Yeah, no, well, he had a lot of problems making. Well, that was that was Piranha Two. Yeah, the Piranha um, movie too. So I guess like we when we can we can get to that, and I'll give you more kind of details as to that. Oh, not I think to, what I was meaning to say that. is that I've seen this movie a million times, and I never realized that his dick was in it, even though that seems to be like my thing. It is my thing. It's my thing to like write yeah, down is your thing penises, now, yeah. and I've I think I just love this movie so much that mm. I never really sat down and was like, oh my God, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger's penis in this mm. very beginning of this film. Yes. But anyway, go yeah. on. Tell me about so, JC. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. We'll get to that eventually. Um I'm so very excited. JC, James Cameron. Um it's kind of like he's one of those he's one of the few names where he doesn't really need much in the way of explanation. Or at least in terms of like his name I feel still holds quite a fair amount of weight within the film industry to yeah. this day, even if, even if he's done a very good job of uh, making it not so. But uh, <laughs> there we'll any, start. any specifics you want to bring up? Avatar, yeah, I guess is my main beef with kind of things like that. And Does I anyone... don't hate Avatar either. You think I about just how don't probably want to see four films of it, like how much money Avatar made, right? Oh, and insane. then can you think of anyone that actually owns that film? What do you mean? Avatar. Who owns it? Yeah. Like, who loved it so much? I mean, I don't own it. That they were like, I need to buy Avatar. The thing is, it made so much money, and it was purely only good on the big screen. Actually, we watched that episode of How To with John Wilson, and Uh there was that Avatar meetup group. Yes. In that show. Well, the thing is, and I knew this well before we saw that How To episode with john wilson and if nobody knows what the, what we're talking about it's a documentary series um created by john wilson it's on hbo it is phenomenal yeah, I, should re- I recommend it very highly so funny yeah and his is a very kind of on the streets look at new york and certainly his his series the end of his first season and going into his second season bridges the gap between when the pandemic was just about to start and then when we were right in the middle of it so it's, it's also very interesting to kind of see how, how people are and behaving and things like that. It's very interesting. Very good, but very funny. Anyway, he ends up going to this, this like focus group, like this, basically it's kind of like an AA meeting. So like people go to this group to discuss Pandora and the nature <laughs> and like the principles of Pandora because people watch Avatar and they get depressed because it looks so beautiful. I, maybe I need to watch it again because I don't yeah. remember feeling so connected or or, or maybe so disconnected mm. from, from watching that film. I mean, the only feeling I got was when the ship goes over the waterfall and it does this funny thing and it made my stomach feel a bit weird because I saw Avatar in 3D. Yeah, I think gonna, I did too. If you were going to watch anything in 3D, it was going to be the film that it was effectively made for. I watched Beowulf in 3D. Oh. I saw, I saw <laughs> IMAX in 3D. That was my very first IMAX movie. It was a Beowulf movie. I would say do not go see a 3D movie hungover out your fucking tits. Were you hungover during Avatar? No, I was hungover during Up. During? Oof. You... Yeah. I'm there with like my mate and stuff. And obviously the first 10 minutes of that movie, it's like So you're hungover. Horrible. Oh, and we're all crying. Crying. Cry- yeah, hungover. In 3D? Crying. 3D. I was crying into my 3D glasses. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was a moment. It was a moment. I do really like that film. I do really like that film. Problem is, is, I have trouble watching it now just because of the memories it gives me from from that one moment. I'll uh, never... Oh, it's because you're so in love with me. You can't imagine what would happen. What, if you passed away? Yeah. I'm never going to watch that movie again. I mean, the thing is, you have the added benefit of having to deal with my body after we're gone because there's no fucking way I'm getting past, like, 66. There's <laughs> no fucking way. I've got 30 years to do oh, no. all of the things that I want to do. And then I feel like the bucket itself needs to be kicked. Okay. I think I have to be done by it. Because I've, no, right, I've, no if I've not done it by then, like if I've not like ticked off a few things off the bucket list, then it needs to be kicked. Okay. All right. And then all right. That, I'll start the, the, end of that. the clock right now. No, okay. Don't worry about it. All right. Well, I, either way, let's talk about James Cameron. So, yes. um... So James Cameron is a Canadian filmmaker. Uh, we more know him now, probably less for the films, but he's kind of more—he's more of an environmentalist now as well. Oh. Um, 
So very, very much you've, you, you'll you have seen things like Aliens of the Deep and, uh, yeah, his documentaries delving deeper into the into the wars and things like that. Very much a product of his success or egomania from how Titanic was, like, the biggest thing on the fucking planet. Correct. Which still boggles my mind to this day, right? What, that it was so popular? Oh, yeah. Thing uh, is, thing is, that I, movie just, like... Turned me into a real woman. Whatever. <laughs> Jesus. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Right. So, um, yeah. We're going to do an episode where we track, we track your desires and passions over the years as like a youngster into what effectively turns you into, in inverting commas, a woman, right? Right. Aye. It's, I think it'd be very interesting to track. It's something we've spoken about before. We could make a documentary on it. I know who's. I know who's next on the list. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's for another day. Anyway. <laughs> and I guess like the the reason I say that like kind of boggles my mind is like this guy. This guy is like one of the most bankable filmmakers on the planet. Mm. It's insane. Yeah. Like the guy makes films that bank like hard. Yeah. Like super hard. And I guess, like, he has relatively quite humble beginnings. I guess he has this same sort of, like, backstory as, as a lot of other kind of filmmakers that end up making a relatively quite big budget, uh, like, cinema spectacles, basically. And it's yeah. like, I, they saw George Lucas' Star Wars back in the day. They wanted to make movies. Simple as that. Yeah. Right? Definitely. And obviously Star Wars is, is is influential in so many other different kind of ways in terms of sci-fi and where sci-fi goes in cinema and things. So I think it's also a very good kind of you know starting point for most people anyway. But carrying on. Yeah. So relatively humble beginnings. He's working as a truck driver um, and he decides to quit his job to go work in film. So for the most part, he's working as like a PA, he's like a production assistant. He ends up working as a miniature model maker, art director, production designer, and main designer. And that's mostly because he works on stuff for the Roger Corman company. Oh. Right? And this is into the 70s and then obviously leading into the 80s. So in terms of like stuff that he's worked on, Rock and Roll High School, Battle Beyond the Stars, which you will see a lot of like the kind of set design and things in that. And exactly the same with Galaxy of Terror. And I'm assuming, I think Battle Beyond the Stars and Galaxy of Terror, I think they use the same sets. Okay. But uh, you can kind of notice that with like the long hallways and obviously there's like egg cups and stuff going on. But the way that it's kind of put together and it's built in things, very influential, very interesting. And this is a, maybe about the same time as Alien or maybe just, just after. Um because Alien, again, is another one that kind of breaks the mold. It's yeah. Like probably one of the best designed films that's ever been made, ever. Oh, yeah. Um, and he also was art director on John Carpenter's Escape from New York. Oh, as well. shit, yeah. Yeah, so there's plenty of stuff there. So, effectively, his directorial debut comes with Piranha 2, The Spawning. Oh, nice. Yeah. And that's purely because the original director, I can't remember his name, I think it's Mike... I can't remember it was Mike something or other, but okay. maybe you can figure out. I'll, I'll get um, to it. I didn't. I didn't put it down. I didn't think we talk about it for very long. But uh, yeah, he he's the special effects director on Piranha Two, and because of the amount of conflicts between between the the original director and the production company, Mike's gone. And uh, oh wow, Joe Dante did the original Piranha. Yeah, is that seventy eight? At 78, this is Piranha 2. I know, but I wanted to get the first movie. Oh, okay. So basically, between there was conflicts between that and the production company. Uh, James Cameron ends up having being forced into the role to, to finish directing uh, Piranha 2. And the, he, he doesn't really like Piranha 2 that much. He doesn't really bother with it. Um, Lance Henriksen is in it. Yes. That's yes. maybe why they became best friends. Potentially. I think a lot of where... Cameron gets a lot of its kind of start up is from the people he worked with yeah. on uh, the Corman, Corman productions, basically. That's cool. So, like, I would say, personally, he's got very kind of similar to beginnings to, say, like, Ridley Scott, who is also set designer, set decorator, illustrator. Uh, uh, so you see, as they start to move into doing feature filmmaking... They're taking a lot of those skills forward. Right. And to a point, it feels like they're 
they're pioneering to a certain extent. Like you look at the model work in Alien, you look at the model work in like Aliens, or you look at the model work and say, you know, this first Terminator movie that we're going to be looking at. Yeah. Um, it looks very fresh, looks very original, looks very clean, and it's it, it doesn't jar in any way, shape, or form. Right, yeah. I would say there's probably some rough rough edges in the Terminator. Yeah. Yes, But I agree. It's all starting to lead towards being more pioneering in this field at the time. So, it's still perfect. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't detract from anything. So James Cameron writes the Terminator in 84... And you're going to call it like that's this is his this is his directorial debut, basically. So he writes the Terminator the same year he's he co-wrote Rambo 2. Oh, yeah. So he wrote he co-wrote Rambo 2 with with Sylvester. And obviously, I mean, I have to point this out, like he goes from making the Terminator in 84 and immediately goes on and makes Aliens in 86. Yeah. So it's a massive markup in in quality in terms of like where his trajectory is going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Cuz like this is like that is like his the breakthrough time. And I mean the guy goes on to make cuz we're never going to talk about James Cameron again. So I was like let's just get it all out cuz as far as I'm aware there's not a dick in true lies. Um Sadly no. So no. Tom but, Arnold. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean this guy goes on to make the Abyss, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, True Lies, Titanic, and obviously Avatar. So, powerhouse. Like, they're all huge movies. Like, they're massive movies. I love The Abyss. The Abyss is really good, yeah. The Abyss is really good. Um, you they're know, all, yeah, they're all five-star movies, in my opinion. As much as I don't, I don't really enjoy Titanic, I've seen Titanic, like, fucking 12 times or something. Oh, yeah. For one reason or another. Like, it's just been on. Like, everyone had that on video. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got it the day it came out. Yeah, everyone had the I fucking bought, song. Um, or my mom bought me, it was uh, from Blockbuster, you could get a pre-order, like, little coupon yeah. ticket thing from Blockbuster. And so when it came out, you had a res- reserved VHS copy, the two the two VHS tapes set. Wow. Uh, and so I could go in the day. I was like, I woke my mom up, it was like 10 a.m., and I was like, bring me to fucking Blockbuster, mom! And, you know, yeah. so I could get my VHS of Titanic. It's a big deal. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger had to finish wrapping Conan the Destroyer because he was like contractually obligated Uh, to do that film before. Dino Dino De Laurentiis would have had him under the thumb. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So. (laughs) At least they remained friends. I mean, yeah. That's what it sounds like, at least. I mean, he's either. Well, it goes back to that Godfather quote, which we all know. (laughs) So. What? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, he had to wrap filming on Conan before he could film The Terminator. And so James Cameron's like, well, I'm not going to do it without him. Mm. Um, so he spent that time. That's when he wrote Aliens. It was like during that six-month span of time. It's insane. That he had. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, he's a guy. I wouldn't say he's a guy who's able to kind of achieve the impossible because there's only so many films that he's got on his docket anyway but in terms of making a sequel to alien the fact that he was able to do it is mind-blowing because aliens is like it's probably, i mean it's probably better than phenomenal. alien i yeah, know probably better like than how alien. can you do that i mean well, I, he could, did I can't it. even imagine like he did it so he, yeah he did good for him because it's awesome yeah no, it's so good cool. there is some there was some weird people i was going to bring it up later but since I was talking about him having to wait for Arnold before he films the movie. Yeah. But he had, there were some interesting choices by the studio and interesting choices made. I guess James Cameron wanted Lance Henriksen originally as the Terminator. Mm. Until I think he met, he was like introduced to Arnold, like yeah. at a party as Mr. Universe. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, interesting. Yeah. Obviously, that makes sense. Yeah. But I guess at the original pitch meeting, Lance Henderson was like dressed in leathers mm. and kicks the door open. Okay. And was like playing the role of the Terminator. Yeah. Um, which I thought was super interesting. Well, yeah. I guess like like if we think about that, like kind of how understated, like I guess the Terminator would have felt in there as opposed to being this gigantic imposing figure. Because again, this is still very early days for Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah, in film and stuff. Because like I mean, Conan, Conan the Barbarian is a, is is a hit, but 
it's not really showing much of like his his acting chops because let's be fair Schwarzenegger at this point isn't much of an actor right he's not really given he's not really Hercules in New York yeah like he's he's doing <laughs> he is he is performing probably not to the best of his abilities he does get better right but I think that's obviously I think that's a very clever ploy by by Cameron is that he's a big imposing figure you don't have to get him to say very much just his mere presence on screen yeah, that'll is do enough the trick. To, is enough to do it. So he had twenty four lines in wow. Conan the Barbarian, mm -hmm. and James Cameron wanted him to speak even less because it's more frightening. Yeah, and he only had fourteen lines in this entire film. Yeah, so his body does all the legwork in this movie, even when he does that little little hop over the curb that you love. Yeah, when he comes, <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, because <laughs> like there's. I guess, like, that's the main thing, and I think, like, w what they were trying to do is that they didn't want Arnold to blink, they didn't want Arnold to emote, but yeah. there are certain things that they just could not obviously control, and that's like, he's gonna blink when they fire a gun, because it fucking makes a flash, and he's gonna blink yes. when it happens. There's also other things where, like, he's gonna, he's gonna wince when he crashes through a fucking door, because he's crashing through a fucking door. Yeah. And he's also gonna... Do strange little hops when he jumps onto curbs and stuff. There's that part where he like he, he parks up the station wagon and there's a guy on the phone, some fat dude with a beard wearing mm -hmm. a, wearing his fucking dungarees, and uh, he does this tiny wee hop like up onto the curb. And I'm like, Terminator wouldn't do that. <laughs> but the thing is, he did. He did do and it, it's and it's in great. the film. Yeah, it's, it's in great. the film. But, oh my gosh. Uh, I love that little hop. Yeah. I mean, like, we can talk about the film, like, endlessly. Like, it's one of our favorite films. Yes. Like, I really, really enjoy it. I mean, obviously, the score is fantastic. Oh, my God. It's, like, one of the most iconic scores ever written. Brad Fidel. Um, and he Just came back to so do good. the music for Terminator 2. Yeah. Um, and, well, he does a bunch of Cameron stuff, actually. Fidel. Yeah, I don't think I wrote down the Cameron stuff he did, but I wrote down like Fright Night, Serpent in the Rainbow, Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah, Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah. Yeah. Did that, you know that he was in Hall and Oates movie. for six months during the 70s? He played the keyboard for Hall and Oates. Huh. Yeah. I did not know that. That's there, why you're here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, Adam Greenberg shoots this, shoots this movie as well. Hell yeah, he, he did. Yeah, he also shoots uh, Terminator 2. Yep. Later on. And a bunch of other stuff like Santa Claus 2, Ghost. Like North. A bunch of shit. Yeah, tons of shit. Junior. Yeah. Three yeah, men and a bunch. baby. And a little lady. Pretty much. He's like Adam, the Adam Greenberg look is that he's able to make, he's able to kind of sculpture faces like really, really well. Like sculpt them in light, which I quite like. Mm. Like he, I put him towards like, you know, he's able to, he's able to like make make Arnold and stuff like look the very best that they can do because he's got like fantastic uh, like like fa facial structure yeah I think keeps on falling over hold on you've got the bad pop shield again. I've got the bad pop shield because everything's a fucking joke in this in this market this racket that we're fucking trying to <laughs> are you ready for the synopsis yes. it is a lot so okay. it's a little bananas I mean obviously the premise of this film is absolute bananas yeah but i'm gonna try to read this without fucking it up okay okay let me put on my movie voice in the post-apocalyptic future reigning tyrannical supercomputers teleport a cyborg assassin known as the terminator back to 1984 to kill sarah connor whose unborn son is destined to lead insurgents against 21st century mechanical hegemony. <laughs> hegemony? Hegemony. Hegemony? I have no idea how to yeah, say that hegemony. word. Hegemony. Hegemony? Yeah. 21st century mechanical hegemony. What does that word even mean? Uh, hegemony. Uh, that is a mouthful. Oh, I know. And that's is that, one did, sentence. Did, Cam did Cameron write that? I don't know. Because like I don't know how I don't know how you would how you would react to that in a pitch meeting. I know. Hegemony. Hege I thought that was I hegemony. Thought... Hegemony. I think I had it right. 
All right. Like what Google to say it for me? I know, but like the way America hegemony. Hegem. Right. Okay. All right. Hege hegemony. What does it mean? Jesus Christ. Leadership or dominance, especially by one country or social group over others. Okay. Twenty first century mechanical hege hegemony. God, I have a master's degree and I can't read. I'm not done with the synopsis. Meanwhile. The human resistance movement dispatches a lone warrior to safeguard Sarah. Can he stop the virtually indestructible killing machine? Oh, Jesus. Right, okay. Right, that was a mess. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Sorry. Tagline, yeah. your future is in his hands. Whose hands? I'm not the sure. Terminator. Maybe. Huh. It's... It's okay. weird that the synopsis is really kind of highlighting Kyle Reese as like the savior, the star of yeah. this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not really. I, I don't know. I almost feel like everyone has like equal pull in this movie. Like the Terminator, Kyle Reese, and like Sarah Connor are all kind of yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, well, Sarah, Sarah Connor has got to go through that journey where she's yeah. able to like save herself and stuff like that, so that she becomes the person that she's destined to be yeah and i think that's something i quite like and that's something you see in cameron's stuff is just the is the prevalence of very strong female characters that are written relatively quite well and they're developed you know so i mean it's not you know it's nothing it's nothing uh nothing that he's not been able to do but i mean that i guess like that's an interesting thing about the film in general i mean there's some there's some reviews online and some of this shit like i mean as uh, folk casting shade on the terminator saying it's fucking boring i can't imagine anyone saying this movie is no. boring because the thing is is like if you say the terminator is boring then effectively you have a problem with just mainstream movies and 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 what they are in general because effectively the terminator is just uh, is one long chase movie. Yeah. With a few like set pieces and stuff like that. That's what effectively what all of the Terminator films are. Is chase films. This this movie starts in the kind of post apocalyptic world, right? Like that's how it opens. Yeah, there's where a big, it's like kind of Yeah. So yeah, it opens it opens on basically like nuclear nuclear fallout LA. Yeah. And then it has this cool thing where the, the hunter killer comes over the top and then it pans across. And then we see we see the rolling tanks, like the other hunter killers, like rolling around and stuff like that. And I think I think we see someone's running around and then someone gets killed. Yeah. I was just gonna say how it says Los Angeles twenty twenty nine. Yeah, we're not and far it's off. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Oh dear. And I'm like, oh, Ryan, we have we only have seven years to get our shit together, but then the mm. the global nuclear war starts way before. Yeah, it does. Skynet. Yeah. So. Ouch. Yeah, that's gonna be a shame for everybody. <laughs> like we're gonna we're gonna fix this pandemic and hopefully hopefully get our get our shit under control, and uh, yeah, then Skynet's gonna switch on and then obliterate all of us as a countermeasure. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And uh, Sarah Connor's only 19 in this movie. Did you know that? Mm, no. Like her character is 19. Okay. Yeah. Huh. I just thought that was interesting. She's very young. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I mean, that's fine. That's okay. Um, I mean, I have a bigger problem with her scooter. No, no, no. Oh. What no. Do you mean, no, no. The Honda Elite CH125. I have that written down. I also have a photo in my phone, and I sometimes check on like Auto Trader to see if I can buy that scooter for myself. Okay, because it looks like the robot from Rocky IV. Happy birthday, Polly. <laughs> it looks like that fucking thing. Every time I see it, I'm no! like, it looks like the fucking. Don't compare it to the Rocky movies. Why not? Because I don't. I'm... It looks like the robot from Rocky IV. Happy birthday, Polly. <sighs> I love that scooter. I think it looks really cool. It looks mm. really heavy, too. It does. I mean, it's one of the. It's also one of the things, other than everybody's hair and the music and stuff, is that it dates it. It dates the film like quite heavily. Um, yeah, I guess. Like you know, you know, you know what decade this film's made in. <laughs> what's the What's the date? Uh, it's the date. It's like it's like. Have you not seen my Nikes? Like, I mean, <laughs> it's like. What year is it? Yeah, yeah. we just see a real bright light. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, because every other like playing member, like the the film does a very good job of making 
the earth and like i don't know if it's like la maybe just la in general but like it's a completely undesirable place to be that requires a nuclear strike in order to <laughs> to like wipe it clean because everyone's an asshole like everyone's a you complete so? fucking asshole in the movie yeah all the bit part players like the garbage truck driver uh-huh all the patrons in the restaurant her Sarah Connor's fucking absent boyfriend is a fucking asshole. The guy on the payphone. You know uh, that that voice message she gets, mm. or her answering machine message. That's James Cameron's voice. Oh really? Mm-hmm. There you go. Breaking up with her. Well, not or wow. breaking off the date. Well, he wasn't. Night. Yeah, he wasn't with her at that point. Seriously, because he he was married to Lyndall Hammond for for a couple of years. Nineteen ninety seven to nineteen ninety nine. Kaboom. Yep. So, yeah, this is also well before then anyway, but... He waited um, until she, like, hulked out after T2. Yeah. <laughs> Those fucking shoulders. She Jesus had 1% Christ. body fat. Really? During Terminator 2. She, like, trained with, an uh, like, a ex-Israeli fighter. Wow. Crap Maga. I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah, that's what that is. I mean, yeah. Like, well, yeah. it was, like, three hours... Only three hours a day. Okay. But for six months... And then she had like one percent body fat and wow. was super ripped. She does look ripped. No, like she, she look yeah, she looks she, like she could fucking snap your neck. She probably could. Yeah, she looks about as yeah. It's like my dream. Like I, I post a picture of her Crap from Terminator guy. Two and I'm like, right. that's what I want it to look like, but I'm not huh. dedicated in any sort of way to try that hard. No, no, because it does require work. Ooh, like just yeah. say just saying that you're going to do it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna happen. I'm gonna try to will it into um, being. Yeah. Yeah, try your best. She looks but, so cool uh, in the movie. Yeah, that's in Terminator 2, though. She looks cool in this movie, too, because she's got the scooter. I like mm-hmm. her feathered hair. Um, yeah. Tie-dye yeah. shirt. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah, there's a lot of very memorable parts of the film. And, I mean, I kind of, like, I'm like, I'm like, you can go into them and stuff and, like, kind of do that. I thought I'd do the Arnold accent a little bit more, you know, because I do you like that bit. Have, well, we haven't even talked about him yet, really. No, not really. I think... Because, like, the way they come into the movie is, like, obviously they're traveling through the through the time portal and no nothing inorganic can come. So that's why the Terminator is covered in, in flesh is because nothing inorganic can go through the time portal. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, they explain it for whatever reason in the movie. Well, I thought that they he had the fleshy skin because they could... St- it was like rubber before and it was so obvious that they were yes terminators and so they put the fleshy skin on them yeah so they were indetectable well it's also they didn't know how to do it the time it's also portal. a twofold thing so nothing inorganic can come back is what it was right that's why they couldn't send back guns and things because that's what happens when kyle reese gets arrested and he's talking to the the psychotherapist, and mm-hmm. he's just like, why didn't you bring back a ray gun? And he's like, nothing inorganic will go, asshole. Why am I talking to you? And Yeah. Because oh. I thought about that. I was like, what if they just covered the ray gun in... Uh, in human skin? In skin. Gross. Yeah, and it was just covering a ray gun. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would work, right? That's insane. That's some, like, Ed Gein shit, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's maybe, yeah. Going, yeah, that's maybe going a bit too far. Yeah. The full frontal penis scene comes in five minutes and 26 seconds into this film, mm-hmm. right at the tippy top of the movie. Yes. And uh, it's when we see the Terminator Arnold Schwarzenegger come through that time portal and yeah. do the coolest, you know, pose move. Yeah. Stands out. Yeah. The thing the film does very well is that both characters are introduced the exact same way. And you're... One a lot cooler than the other. Yeah. Well, one's one's a lot more human than the other one. Yeah. Like, it's not difficult to figure that one out. Yeah. But the thing is, is that they, they, there's a suspension of disbelief and they, you don't know which one's coming to save her and which one's not. Right. You know, until obviously, like, he knocks on the door of that one girl and he's like, Sarah Connor. And then she goes, yes. <laughs> and they just shoots her in the face. So, yeah. I mean, that's, you know. Six times. Yeah. Plenty of times. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, like there's plenty of times where like they're you know they're they're, they're they both come in completely naked to the world. It just yes. so happens that Michael Bane's able to find trousers very fast. You know, 
Arnold has well, to go out them. asking for them. He steals them from a homeless man. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's the. That's he took the, my pants. Took my pants, the asshole. Asshole, son of a bitch, took my pants. Yeah, and then he ends up like hiding in a clothing store so he can find clothes that still look terrible. Because those cool Nikes, but. Those yeah. fantastic fucking Nikes. Like, I've always wanted a pair of those Nikes. Oh, wow. And I don't know if I could get away with them. The thing is, is like, like the, they're the kind Velcro? of. Yeah, but then there's like the self lacing shoes from like Back to the Future 2 yeah. as well. And it's like, it's like, look, they, they might, they were fine, but I don't know if you could get away with them now. You know what I mean? Like, it's very kind of like. I like the Velcro. I haven't got a problem with the Velcro. I mean, I, I think those, I think those Nikes are actually all right. I like a good old high top. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd quite enjoy a high top, Nike, but I just don't know if I could get away with it. We'll see. Yeah, I guess so. I'm we'll just see. I'm just planting the seeds for Christmas presents further down the line. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Arnold has to get clothes from a bunch of punks that are looking through a telescope. This is so good. This is so good. Uh, this is also the dick scene, by the way. Yeah, no one's, no one's five aware. minutes, we're, twenty-six seconds yeah, we're in. Not, we're not going to explain every beat of the Terminator. You fucking assholes can go watch it yourselves. They've seen it. They've seen it. Of course it. they've not. Or, or they've seen it and they said it was boring. I don't know who those people are. That seems wild to me. Well, no, because because the internet is an open cesspool. Fair enough. You know. Well, we get to see punk rock Paxton in uh, in the Terminator, which is so good. And he's got the blue hair. Isn't, doesn't one of them have like does it look like they've got like uh, marks on their face i think that's bill paxton it's like he's got tire tracks on his yeah, face because the exact same character i think it's clown from the akira from it's either the film adaption of akira or it's the it's in the book but the main one of the main boys clown right he's the leader of the rival bike gang oh in the thing. He has the tire tread thing I remember right that. down the center of his face yes i haven't finished the movie yes. yet but i remember that part because I think Akira's A E two. You want me to look? I think. Thing is, the book the book was around for a decade before the before the film was made. It might be eighty eight. Eighty eight. So um, yeah. So well, that's he, cool. I if didn't... he took, I don't know if he took that little aspect of like the because this. I mean, Terminator is very much kind of grounded in uh, cyberpunk. Like, big time. Well, he would have had to have gotten it from the book. Yeah, yeah. Well, James Cameron's obviously a, a purveyor of manga anyway, because he ended up producing the he ended up producing and writing the uh, Battle Angel Aaliyah film. Right. So he's known about that shit for a long time. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that film came out. Holy fuck, thank God for James Cameron. That fucking film came out. Insane. Insane. Yeah, yeah it was insane. As a 30-something-year-old seeing that on the big screen, I was like, what the fuck? There's no way... <laughs> But uh, yeah, the Bill Paxton, the Bill Paxton punk trio. So funny. It's really good. He, yeah. He walks up needing clothes. Yes. What is it? He just says, like, give me your clothes. Well, no, the one he takes the clothes from goes to, because Bill Paxton's like, it's my turn. And he breaks the glass. And so they're looking through a telescope. Yeah. It's like pure telescopes. Yeah, yeah. You know, look over the sea or whatever, right? And the guy turns around and he goes... What's wrong with this picture? And they all turn and see, and basically Arnold's completely in the nutty. Yeah. And come and just walks over. So obviously, completely wide, massive shock, because yeah. Arnold's huge. Of course right? he is. This is like peak Arnold at this point. And he just he just starts he just starts dredging up. So obviously everything's all out, tackle out. Yep. He's just walking over and he comes up to them and he goes, Your clothes, give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> wash yeah. day nothing clean right nothing clean right <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yep yeah they all pull knives on him yeah because this is where this is where he learns like like the the fuck you asshole and stuff like that that all kind of came in because that's these are all these are all <laughs> words like he uses all of these later on these are all words he picks up from the from the fucking <laughs> From the world he's now he's now treasuring around and trying to obviously kill every Sarah Connor that isn't existing. So <laughs> you know. Yeah. I like when he puts it in his Rolodex of, of phrases. Yes. Fuck you asshole. And he does, he he says it later. But I mean he like he I don't know, how does he get how did he dispatch Bill Paxton in that scene? Isn't I can't there remember. a bottle or something? I think he rips someone's heart out. 
like he just pushes his hand through someone's chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he pushes somebody, and I, I don't know if there was like a bottle involved. I can't no, remember. There's no, there's the bottle. He hits the bottle with and, and onto the telescope. That's before Arnold turns up. Oh right. They pull the knives and they fight. So for whatever reason, he like I don't know breaks breaks fucking Bill Paxton's neck. I can't. I genuinely can't remember. Doesn't I thought he just like punched through someone's chest. Yeah, he lifts someone up off the ground by by impaling him on his fucking gigantic arm. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, the other guy ends up just giving him his clothes. Yeah, of course. And that's what happens. That's what you're gonna do. Yeah, so. What I love so much every time I remember that Bill Paxton is in this movie is that he is the only actor to have been killed by a predator, a Terminator, and a xenomorph. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. There you go. What He's a legacy. Terminator, Aliens, and Predator 2. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because I'm like, Lance Henriksen is also in this universe. Yeah. Each of those universes. Mm-hmm. But they don't count him as being... Uh, killed by a xenomorph because he's an android. Really? Yeah. I think that's bullshit. I know. Yeah, that's rubbish. Because he gets killed by the T-800. He's killed by a predator, an alien versus predator. And then an alien, he's like torn apart by the queen. Yeah. But they don't count that. But I'm like... Technically, he doesn't die. He doesn't die. That's true. I think he he gets shut down in what... I don't know if it's aliens... No, 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 no. Aliens is where he's in it and he gets ripped in half. In Alien 3... He gets shut down. Yes. In Alien, is... though. Not Aliens. Alien. No, Alien 3. No, no, no. I'm saying he was originally in Alien. He was in originally in Aliens. Mm. Yeah. You're getting confused. Because uh, Henrik Lance Henriksen is not in the Ridley Scott movie. That is Ian Holm, who plays the android oh, in right. Alien. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So Paxton and Henderson you would not survive at a Comic Con. Aliens. With your, with your mix-ups, you got too much dick on the brain. Yeah, I'm yeah. allowed. Aye. Right. Well, I guess. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. So I yeah. mean, they're in an elite club, even though Lance Henriksen's not allowed to be in that club with Sweet Bill, who's no, no longer with us. No, poor Bill. For a bill. I like that bit where, where Arnold goes into the, the gun shop and he gets all those guns. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that bit's really good. If anybody who's ever listened to Arno Cores, they should probably listen to the Terminator because there's a fantastic rendition of the of the gun buying in that scene. He's like getting it like a plasma shooter or something. He's like, only what's on the wall, pal. 12 gauge autoloader, 45 long slide with laser sighting, phase plasma rifle with a 40 watt range is oh, what yeah. he asked for yeah because i wrote them all down oh because <laughs> i knew i was gonna do them who's the nine millimeter because these these like, that's you've all got good taste well this is all like it's like so which one of these will any one of them is suitable for home defense like, <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> insane like, what the fuck <laughs> it's like the 12 gauge auto loader it's just like yeah it can go it can go full auto <laughs> just lay waste to whatever's in its oh fucking God. weight because, yeah. like, he just starts single-handing that fucking thing at one point. He trained to be um, to be able to shoot with his left and right hand. Okay. So that he looked like a robot. It worked. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, like, that's one of the main things. Ambidextrous. Yeah. I guess, like, that's one of the main things is that, yeah, well, he's, like, he's single-handing two-handed guns. Yeah. Um, and I guess like that's kind of that's kind of the main thing is like it's 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 very much it's he pl- he does play it better, but I think they have more money in Terminator Two in order to make it feel a little bit more like because not only that he has more personality in Terminator Two as well, yeah, and he's more robotic. So I don't know he's able to pull off like some sort of impossible feat in Terminator Two. He's learning. 2. He's learning. Well, I mean, you know? I mean, he's he, he he is. I mean, when he gets into the nineties, that's where it's like peak Arnold, as oh far as God. I'm concerned. So I mean, it's it's fine. But uh, the way that they're able to take that villain and turn him into like one of the best good guys is heroes. You know. Yeah. Another feat. Yeah. It's like. I well, can't look, believe you could look, do that. I mean, it, it's it's all penned from the mind of James Cameron, who's now mostly obsessed with Pandora <laughs> and water. And that's pretty much that's pretty <laughs> much it. Um, you know, uh, there's the part where 
Sarah Connor finds out that all the Sarah Connors are being shot down. Mm. And she's like, sees in the phone book, there's only three. She's the only one left. Yeah, she's the last one. And she's like having a delightful solo dinner date with herself Mm -hmm. at this bar slash restaurant, eating an entire pizza. She has a whole pizza. I think she's about to take her very first bite of this pizza. And she puts the pizza down to watch the news to find out like all these Sarah Connors are dead, right? Yep. And then she leaves the pizza, and I feel like if I found out, I don't know, it's hard to put myself in her shoes, but if I found out a bunch of Laura Hensels were getting, like, gunned down, I'd at least take the pizza to go, Mm -hmm. because what if it's my last, you know? Well, you don't, you're not, you're not listed on the, in the phone registry, are you? I don't know who is anymore. They don't really deliver those around anymore. We don't have a landline. We don't really do that. We didn't have, we've never had a landline, because it's so expensive, for one. We might be safe. So I can eat my pizza in peace. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like where Terminator and stuff goes, I'm assuming they would use the internet to find their prey now. If if for whatever reason, if for whatever reason you are the savior of the human race who gives birth to the the, the one warrior who trains the Why can't I just be the savior? Why do I have to birth a son? <clears throat> to be the savior. Because that's that's just why the way it have to goes. Do it? I don't know. I don't know why John Connor has to do it, but obviously Sarah Connor doesn't live long enough in order for for her to do that sort of thing. So, well, time is flexible. Well, the thing is, you know what? They fixed it for you in Terminator: Dark Fate. <laughs> that crystalline piece of shit <laughs> that came out. Um. So no, you should be happy, aren't you? You're happy. You're happy now that the savior is a woman. Yes. Right, of course you are. That was a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a movie where they were handing out uh, free posters at this screening to the cinema because we saw it. We saw it in Scotland. Yeah. They were handing out free posters. I took one. So I was like, oh, that looks cool. And then we saw it and I put it back. Yeah, you put Put it it back. back. And I was tempted to put all of the pile into the bin (laughs) because it was a waste of time. Yeah, it wasn't very good. No, no, it wasn't very good at all. It wasn't very good at all. Um... But, uh, yeah, didn't you tell me something about the the movie was originally going to have two Terminators in it? Yeah, I think in the, one of the first drafts of the film, uh, James Cameron wanted two Terminators to come back. And one of them looked, you know, like the T-800. And then one of them was like the T-1000 where he's a liquid boy. Yeah. The liquid boy and the robot boy come back. Um, and both of them make it through. But they also had two of the Saviors. warrior, savior, vigilante right. boys come back. But one of them dies. On okay. the way back in, so then you end up with only one Kyle Reese, and then you've got two Terminators. But then he okay. realized that it was too difficult to make the Liquid Boy. Like, it would yeah, have been too course. expensive, and that he's like, I don't know if we can make it. Yeah. We don't have the technology to make it. So Well, that's after... something he's been very good at doing, is that he develops things, and then he waits for the technology to catch up. Right. He said that it worked decently well in the Abyss, and he's like, I think we can do that. In mm, T2. So yeah. that's why you have that T-1000 in the Terminator 2. Yeah. Yeah. Judgment Day. Mm-hmm. After, because it was like, he's like, I can do this now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the, uh, was that fucking Jurel from uh, Virtua Fighter? That's pretty much what it what it is. Um, right over my head. Right over your head. I've seen you play that game. Yeah. We don't know who Jurel is. Is it Jurel? Jurel? All the nerds out there all get it. It's the final, <laughs> the final boss in uh, Virtual Fighter. It's just the T one thousand, except it's the it's a it's a woman or it's a man. I can't remember if it's a woman or a man. I think it might be a woman. Um, Liquid gender that has everybody else's moves, and you've got to fight it, and it's like the ultimate fighting machine, whatever. And right. uh, yeah, well, the thing is, like you brought it up, and I was like, because there's been so many misfires with the franchise, right? Right. You know, because you got Terminator. Then you've got Terminator 2. They're effectively the same sort of thing, just everything's kind of flipped on its head, and then they seal it up like nice and tight so oh, that yeah. nobody can fuck with it, basically. But unfortunately, obviously, because it makes so much money, people end up making then Terminator 3 is kind of kind of the same thing as Terminator 2. Then you've got Salvation, it's kind of more focused on like the the nuclear landscape, all that sort of shit, right? And yeah. Then, and then you've got the other two things where we're like, okay. It just ends up looking like a video game. So why hasn't anybody just been like, no, let's have more than one Terminator. Yeah. Just do that story. 
do that story modern day try and change it a little bit so that it kind of makes sense that there was something that didn't go right with Terminator 2 so that they can kind of fix it or go a little bit further back like they did in Genesis, right? Yeah. All that sort of stuff. I feel like there are so many things that could have happened that didn't happen Mm. and it just kept tripping over itself and I do not want to see another Terminator movie because as we've been sitting here, I'm remembering what happened in Dark Fate. Uh, So many things that I hated. Yeah. Uh, So many that I, w- I don't even want to bring up. No. But I don't want it anymore. Like, there's I so many not. great ideas. Mm-hmm. Or you could make... Oh, wait, they already did that. I was like, they could make a TV show, but they already had a Sarah Connor Yeah, the show. Sarah Connor Chronicles, yeah. Ugh, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, rubbish. But this movie is obviously perfect, in my opinion, and you've got Full yes. Frontal, and it's great, and it's funny, and it's scary, and yeah. it's got cool robot CG effects, got practical effects, got weird Arnold face. What's the CG effect? Well, maybe not. The yeah. well, the whoops, the the when he melts all of his skin. Is that not computers? No, oh, that's stop motion. That's stop motion. Yeah, that's stop motion. Yeah. See, that's back in the day. That's when. That's when. Well, remember they were gonna do stop motion for uh, all the dinos in uh, Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. But they always felt like it felt a bit too robotic. Yeah. Pardon the pun. And yeah. that's when they developed a lot more of the CG stuff. That's why that's why CG is used quite sparingly in that movie because it only goes so far. Or right. At least then it did. Now, obviously, it's far too prevalent, and I feel like it's it feels a lot of its soul. You know, it loses a lot of its soul. Oh yeah. So for the most part, there are that is the main reason why people look at the Terminator and they go, "It's dated," because it's again, it's like it's at the cusp of using new to old technology because again the abyss came out in what was late 80s right the abyss sure early 90s basically so that stuff that stuff's only just catching up at that point um so yeah but the thing is the stop motion stuff all that sort of thing in the terminator doesn't really look that bad as far as i don't as think I'm it concerned. looks bad and i guess no. i get used to saying it's cg but yeah obviously it makes well, it's sense because it's because stop motion is a dead art at this point, you know, it. I think it still looks really cool, I think and I don't. The only mind. way to use it now is in the artistic, like creative sense. You're not going to use it in a live action movie. You're going to do something like uh, Mad God, that anthology series from. Uh, continue talking. I'll try and find it. But... Oh yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you know, I love practical effects, so using that in this movie, you know, despite how funny yeah. his face looks when he like. You know, it's cutting open his face. Well, like, it's still really cool. Put it put it this way: um, one of the best bits in Ghostbusters Afterlife was when we saw the, the the dog as a as a model, like an animatronic model. One of the best bits in Afterlife right. was that bit there. Was, that uh, was cool. I think you looked over at me and were like, "That's real." Yeah. And the That's director real. of Mad God, for anybody who does not know, because it's not been released yet, is uh, Phil Tippett. He's a uh, He's basically the uh, stop motion officiato. He worked on the Ed Two Hundred Nine on uh, in Robocop. Hell and stuff yeah! Like that. So there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of other kind of things like that. So, um, yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like we've covered everything. Yeah, there's not really anything I have written down that's you know terribly interesting. There's there's no. w- there's one thing where. I feel like everyone might know this. I mean, there's that but... fan- there's that fantastic shot when they're in Tech Noir. And then she she drops over, she drops the she drops the bottle on the floor, yeah. and she dips over, and there's that slow mo shot. That whole sequence up until that point where things almost like are just about to fucking kick off, probably one of my favorite sequences in any film ever. Love I that love shit. Tech Noir. I was what four dollars and fifty cents to get into that club. Yeah, four twenty five. That seems pretty cheap. Still thought it was too expensive. I don't like paying to get into a club anyway. Or well, to a bar with a sometimes cover you sometimes you have to. No, you don't. I just go home. That's true. So you didn't you didn't live the club lifestyle? No. Mm. Mm. I always waited until like it was too it was like too late for them to charge a cover charge or I just wouldn't go. Oh, okay. So they're like, Oh, it's midnight, you don't have to pay anymore. I'm like, cool. Then I'd go in. But no, I don't like that. Okay. But Tech Noir was awesome. The music is so, so good. The dancing. The dancing music, the mm-hmm. the synth music. The dancing. I love that. I love Tech Noir. Um 
the, the one thing I was going to mention when it comes to people maybe having been interested in playing roles in this movie is mm. they also considered O.J. Simpson to play Terminator. Oh, fucking hell. Which, I don't know. I felt like that was mildly common knowledge, but it's it's interesting because they didn't choose him because he seemed too nice, in quotes. Maybe not believable as being <laughs> a murderer. Yeah, just stick a pair of gloves on him and he's ready to go. Uh, Glenn... <laughs> Glenn Close was the first choice for Sarah Connor. <sighs> yeah. Is this off the back of Fatal Attraction or like, is this before Fatal, Fatal Attraction? Yeah, before. It's before Fatal Attraction. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like all the all the right choices were made for this film. One hundred percent. Yeah. Linda Hamilton forever. Yeah. Because yeah. there's that bit where they have sex, where Michael Bain and. When the oh, Hamilton yeah. have sex and stuff like that, Definitely. you know, there's always that bit with the hands when they like slightly release. Oh yeah, because they're coming. The orgasm shot. Yeah, because Kyle Reese comes. You know that. Yeah, he, fucking, he has to. He fucking. Comes. And he's a virgin. He's also a virgin. This is the first time he comes. Yeah. Technically. Well, you don't know that. Nah, he's too scared to masturbate in the future. Well, he had that picture of Sarah Connor that his his best friend. Commander gave him, He's who's not. also his son. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and then he gives him the picture yeah, of he's his... He's not... No, no. He's not masturbating to that. He's definitely no. masturbating to that little picture no. of Sarah Connor. No, 100%. I'm not, no, I'm not having With that. With his grimy no, I'm not having nuclear that. hands. No, nah, I don't... We're going down a route. I don't he know if I'm happy is. with this. He said that he had that picture for so long and it was so messed up and he said he was in love with her. So pretty much John Connor he jumped who, so knows, far who knows into creepy territory. So John Connor who knows who Kyle Reese is and he's his father knowingly sends him back to the past after obviously having given him that picture knowing that he's going to fuck him fuck his mother in order to give birth to him. Correct. He's not masturbating to that photo. Yes, or at least is. if he is, he's like John Connor. It's like, like the only crying picture himself he has to sleep like of a every woman. Night. It's the only because he was born into this world. Fuck, I, yeah, we. Oof, that's was <laughs> this was something I didn't know. Oh God. Yeah, because Kyle Kyle oof. Reese doesn't know that John Connor is his son. He has no idea that that's his son. He just knows it's like his. You know, commanding officer. Oh God! But only John Connor knows. He he he, he sends him. Oh, Jesus. Because he's, he knows he's going to have sex with his mom. Here's the thing. We thought this podcast episode was going on far too long, but like I didn't expect my fucking mind to be blown this hard. Yeah, he definitely jerked off to that picture oh, of Sarah Connor. Oh, my fucking Christ. Oh, my God. When he straight up tells her that he's like... And it's the fact that, that he came like from a... his, 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 his friend, commander, but then son. Son. Because that's the thing. Like Kyle Reese isn't even born by the time that John Connor is born. No, John Connor's old. Like, like he's in real an old time. commander by that time. No, no, because or like, no, he's not. T- no, because like John Connor. John Connor's probably like no, no, forty. No, because John Connor it, it migrates into the new future, so the bombs drop. John Connor's alive, of right? Course. He migrates into the future. Remember, Kyle Reese is born in yeah in the post yeah so like he's not even a lot so like technically he gives birth as like retroact is like oh yeah yeah no like i'm not nah like I don't yeah know. john connor's been been alive for like i don't know 20 30 years before his father's born yeah so why is this not a topic of debate <laughs> like everyone has problems with licorice pizza that came out this week where where it's like the woman the, the uh, statutory rape well, no, she's like, she's like, she's like, she's like being, being seen to be like uh, courting a, 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 a young boy, underage boy. Right. To, to. Well, no, I don't think that it's like, weird have, in that people way. Have a, people have a problem with that, but they don't but have a like, problem with the. His son is like grooming him to be his own father. Holy He's setting shit. him up to be his dad. Oh, fuck. He's yeah. like, I want you to be my dad. Oh my god! Well, no, it's not like he wants him to be his dad. He's like, I need you to be my dad, right? Because, because you are my dad. Such is foretold. Oh my god! Oh, by fuck. the prophet Sarah Connor. Oh fuck! It's my dad. Yeah. Look, in short, Kyle Reese comes hard in this movie. He does. Yeah, because he spent too much time making explosives of a child. He had no time to masturbate. To pit- oh god, no, we're going back. He in definitely circles. did. Oh no! Oh god! Oh he god! He definitely did. Um. Ugh. Anything else you want to add? Um, 
I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. It really fucking. It really fucking buzzed my. <laughs> buzzed my fucking. Um, uh, it's Friday night for Christ's sake. Like I love some of the lines in this movie. Like some of this stuff. Yeah. It's just like that. Well, on the answering machine, the the yeah. roommates like machines need love too. Leave us a message. Yeah. Because and then she gets shot by a machine. That's true. They also have a lizard that fucking hate them. She had, they have an iguana. Yeah. Which hates them and also people should not keep iguanas as pets no. and also that terrarium was very small iguanas can get massive yeah they can get like really really long <laughs> jesus christ anyway she Wrap makes pours like that whole cup of milk and makes a big old Look, sometimes people like a big glass of milk no they don't yeah they do i used to eat i used to have like if you had some cookies and stuff i used to have a little bit sammy scammed it was Ooh, nice. Gross. Well, I don't drink milk here. I don't drink milk in front of you. We've got almond milk that we have now. Yeah. As you slowly convert me into... Hey, I asked. Vegetarianism. That's right. That's right. We all know the answer to this. It's very, very obvious. Would you recommend this movie? No. <laughs> you jokester. Yeah. You little trickster? Yeah. No, I've I've always I've always liked the I don't know. It's like if you think this film's boring, like who are you? I know. What is your name? <laughs> Send it in. Like I don't understand. Your hot take is not hot. No. Your hot take of being like the Terminator is boring. It's like get fucked. I agree. It's fucking stupid. It's a great. The thing is, like, the thing film. is that I'll say, and this is this is me being very serious about about this movie, is that the film itself is a culmination of like a bunch of different kind of genre ideas and all these kind of radical, wild concepts. Because like, I'm not going to say what the Terminator does and like its mythos and all that sort of thing is entirely original because you've, you know, you've had you've had like uh, you've had like Jules Verne. You've had uh, wh whoever wrote War of the Worlds, right? You've had all of these quite wild, grounded kind of sci-fi ideas that are kind of quite high concept. So, like, it's basically taking little bits of all of these things and putting them all together, and it's like, what happens if the machines fight back? I find that super fucking interesting. For sure. So this is very much your kind of your film noir action, uh, romance, uh sci-fi fantasy thing all kind of put into a blender and it's got ideas of like cyberpunk and certainly it's a lot of the kind of the inception of uh like the american take on like the cyberpunk genre and things like that, that i quite like yeah i quite enjoy you know i kind of feel like it goes a lot further i mean it's got like hardware and stuff like that those movies which oh, right. i think are you know really really cool but yeah yeah no i think this film's like runaway that movie with Tom Selleck? I don't know if that's a cyberpunk movie. It's got the robots that look like... like I mean, lawn, that, Lawnmower Man is closer to that. That, like, come and than, get them? Yeah. They fight like, back. We could talk about cyberpunk for days. But uh, either way... Um, yeah. Yeah. The, I'm with you. The term, yeah, the Terminator is just... Uh, is, yeah. I mean, It's it, a game a, changer, in my, I think. It's a game changer. It's one of the biggest franchises that's ever been created. It's a shame that they've shit the bed with it. You know, but... We can still hold on to the love we have of the first two. Yeah, that's something we all need to realize as well, is that we still have the first two movies. It doesn't, it doesn't discount those two because the rest of them are shit. Yeah. You know? So, I, I agree. don't know. Untie your panties, you fucking, <laughs> you fucking apologists out there. You don't, have to, you don't have to feel like it needs to be modern and new in order for it to be better. No. So... I also recommend this movie. It's obvious. I love this movie. I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. I have a tattoo of him on my arm. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. Is this the only showing of Arnold's? Yes. Wang? Yeah. From from what I understand and what I have researched, if you guys know of another movie that has Arnold Schwarzenegger's I'm pretty sure he's full the, frontal, the, the let only me know, other, but well, I only, think I would have seen him. No, the only other one it would have had any sort of likening to would have been Hercules in New York. That would no, have been it, maybe probably. Conan, but not Hercules in New York. No. But no, it's not. No, it's not. Like that's what I mean. Like I'm there's just saying, it's anything not. anything after the Terminator. He's like the one of the biggest stars on the fucking planet after yeah. this movie. So Yeah. No. You would not you were not going to see his wang after that. So give me your final ratings, Rydog. For what? The film? The film. 
Oh, five. Five stars. Same. Out of five. Five stars. I would say seven out of five, but that's not real. <laughs> and what about for the scene? Your visibility and context? I mean, I guess like three and a half, maybe four, you know, in terms of context and stuff like that. I mean, the guy is just, the guy has just been propelled. I say the guy, but the robot has just been propelled um, from the future. Cyborg. Into the present. Yeah, he's a cyborg. He has been <laughs> propelled into the present day from the future but nothing on his back but the yep. thing is that's the thing you don't realize is that that skin is just skin you know they've he made him as the real weapon. he is the weapon he yeah. is the yeah you know what's underneath and we find out later on it looks awesome as fuck but uh yeah, yeah no yeah they make him as real as possible and i guess like yeah they could have made it so that he looked like a eunuch but he doesn't so yeah i like, i would have yeah. I like don't... Alan Rickman from Dogma. He pulls <laughs> right. his pants down, yeah. Like an action man. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I did, you know, I obviously thought about it. Like, why did they give him a penis? But, but why, why wouldn't? Not? Yeah, why wouldn't they give him a penis? It just seems like more work. Well, the thing is, like, if the, he, he would just, he would, he would probably, well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he would just stick out like a sore thumb if he probably didn't have a dick. If they were trying to make him look more real than real, if they were trying to infiltrate. Yeah, that's true. Like, all these pockets of humanity and stuff that were Maybe left. Maybe that was the T-700. Didn't have a dick. Yes. Well, some, yeah, some of the later films explore the other models of the Terminator. Right, yeah. Oh, where boy. it's like, yeah, you're better off just with the before that you have in these two movies you know you don't really need to you don't really need to go any further than that yeah um I'm, i think i'm gonna give that visibility and context a three and a half because it's very dark mm -hmm. uh, but it's it is... only yeah it's only really seen when he because he's passing street lights and stuff yeah. like that and he's mostly backlit but uh as a full frontal scene in in the context it makes more than perfect sense because he came out naked, like what are you gonna do? And also, you're. It's very probably jarring for the those punk kids mm. to see this gigantic naked man walking towards them. You know, that's pretty scary. I would not like that at all. No, I don't think those punk kids actually gave a fuck, though. To be fair, I don't know. Well, the thing they is, they can like... act tough and have knives and shit. But when you got like an Arnold Schwarzenegger size. Dude walking towards you, That's butt true. ass naked. I mean, it, you probably act tough, but you're like, oh my god. Well, certainly, if if I if I uh, yeah if I if I saw a man plunge his whole arm into my friend's chest, <laughs> I would probably give him my clothes. Yeah. Yeah. If he asked me nicely, I would give him my clothes. <laughs> well, that's nice. Uh, so. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. So much, as always, for, for discussing this film with me today. Yes. This was uh, delightful and magnificent, and I love this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we got to watch it again. Not like we don't probably watch it every year, but... Yeah, at least every every so often we stick it on, because it's, it's quite an easy watch. Yeah. So. Well, uh, coming to you from Tech Noir, I have been Laura. Nice. I'm doing my, my, my 80s, like, shuffle dance. Yeah. Where I'm like staring at the ground. I've got my mullet. You know. Hey, look. You could rock a mullet. Business in the front, party in the back. Hell yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. We're in Florida. I can get away with it as well. You sure could. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Well, I was trying to think of something <laughs> late. I was like, could I do an Arnold thing? Like, could yeah, I sure, do an Arnold do quote? Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> Boom. That'll do. Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> Let's just record a little bit to see if it's working and it might be working.